How would you like to save hundreds, if not thousands of dollars or more on your wedding? Today's show is part two of a conversation we started last week all about my favorite wedding money savers. This week we're continuing the conversation and I can't wait for you to see the savings pile up. That's coming up next on The Wedding Planning Podcast. Hey there, it's Kara, and I believe that every engaged couple should enjoy the expertise of a down-to-earth, honest, and professional wedding planner. Join me each week for straightforward wedding planning advice designed to streamline and simplify your wedding plans. To learn more about taking the expense and overwhelm out of your wedding plans, visit weddingplanningpodcast.co slash vault. That's V-A-U-L-T. Enjoy the show. Hello there and welcome to today's show. I hope you're enjoying a great week. I thought it would be really fun and a huge value bomb to roll together 10 of my favorite money-saving opportunities and share them with you in two very detailed shows. This week is part two of a two-part series and we'll review numbers six through 10 of my favorite wedding money-saving opportunities. For a complete rundown of the first five money savers, press pause on this episode and go back to last week. Whether your wedding budget is $5,000 or $50,000, I think everyone can agree that there's absolutely no good reason to spend extra money if there's a less expensive and equally good alternative. And a lot of times, I think there is. Put this money you save listening to these two episodes towards a student loan payoff, tuck it into a savings account for a rainy day, or invest it in your dream honeymoon. I'm 100% confident that we can trim at least $1,000 off your wedding budget with these easy money-saving tips. And I would love to hear about the creative ways that you and your fiance are using to save money on your own wedding. Please always feel free to be in touch with me with your stories, your feedback, your suggestions for future shows. You can send me a DM on Instagram at Wedding Planning Podcast, and you can also find me via email by visiting weddingplanningpodcast.co slash contact. And with that, let's pick up where we left off last week and jump into wedding money saver opportunity number six, which is to shop for your wedding dress from an online resale site. And before you groan and totally dismiss this idea, hear me out. First of all, there is a method. I'm not suggesting that you simply hop online and look at what you see and guess at what dress might look nice on you for your wedding day. What you'll do if this is something that you're considering is go out to a couple of nationwide dress retailers or even boutiques and find a style and the size that fits you that you love take note of that style number and or name, and then search a website like eBay or Craigslist over the coming months and see if you can get lucky with another bride who has worn that dress one time and you, my friend, could get an amazing deal on that same dress. Now, is this wedding money saving tip for everyone? Absolutely not. And again, I completely respect and appreciate that not everybody is into this idea. You will need to be on your toes if this is something you're willing to do. I would highly recommend that you ask a ton of questions of any seller who you're interacting with and do a lot of research. But this is a really great option, especially if you're dreaming of a designer dress that's simply out of your price range. But that beautiful dress that you saw in a magazine and you went to your local boutique and your heart just sunk to the floor when you saw the price tag that was $3,000 or $5,000, take note of that style and look online and see what your options are. I'd say 95% of wedding dresses are worn one time and then tucked into a fancy box in the garage or the attic and it sits there for the next 40 years. 
If there's an option to get the same exact dress, then I think it's worth considering. I personally went with a really simple wedding dress style that was on sale. It didn't cost more than a couple hundred dollars. This wasn't a huge priority on my wedding must-have list, but if I had been in love with a dress that cost a couple thousands of dollars, I definitely would have considered this as an option. And next wedding money saver opportunity for today concerns your invitations. For a stretch last year of a month or two, your very most asked question that came in to me was whether or not it's okay to email your wedding invitations. Honestly, 10 years ago when I was planning my own wedding, I would have cringed at the thought of sending wedding invites via an evite or an email. I've had lots of realizations <laughs> over the past decade and today I have a very different point of view than I did 10 years ago. And I think that society has changed a lot in terms of technology over those past 10 years as well, which has a lot to do with it. But let's be real. Wedding invitations are really, really expensive. They are not great for the environment. I did a show on hosting a green wedding and trying to minimize the impact on the earth and really quick touch on fun fact for you, the number of wedding invitations that are sent out each year can cover the island of Manhattan. And that is a holy crap ton of paper going into landfills because again, I can guarantee you that 95% of the people who open your wedding invitation might keep it out on the refrigerator for a few months, but at some point it ends up in the trash. Digital communication like email is way more acceptable with each passing year. And if you want to skip traditional wedding invitations and send out an invite via email or text or Facebook group or whatever other creative way that you can dream up, then you by all means have my support. I know everyone has an opinion on this. So you might be met with some raised eyebrows, especially by the older generations even spending $3 per invitation, and that's on the very low end, that can add up to $300 for a 100 or a 200 person wedding. And we're not even getting into the postage to send it and the postage to get the RSVP back. Tack on another dollar for that. So if you feel that the majority of your guests would be receptive to a digital invitation, then by all means, go for it. This is a great way to save a few hundred dollars at least. And really quickly on this point, do be sure to keep in mind those elderly guests or those who just simply refuse the internet. I think we all have a few of those within our family and our friends. I can think of a bunch of my family who would never respond to an online invitation of any sort. So do be sure to have a game plan in place for how you're going to reach those people, whether it's just a small number of printed invitations or a handwritten letter or however you would like to go about that. Here's a good money saving tip for you if you're deeper into the wedding plans and you're set on a more traditional food service for the main meal. Remember last week we touched on some creative options for serving the wedding day meal. If that looks like a sit down dinner for you, then you can still save a bunch of money with your food by considering doing your appetizers and or the desserts on your own. So last week we highlighted an hors d'oeuvre and cocktail hour and also food trucks as options for feeding your wedding guests. If you want to keep the traditional sit down meal portion of the evening, then set up the appetizers and or the desserts with some help from your family and your friends. I'm dropping a few teasers in these money-saving episodes, and here's another one. Stay tuned for an episode later this summer where we're going to create a sample appetizer menu. We're going to go shopping for all of the food and ingredients, and I'm going to break down everything you need to know about cost, quantities, timing, and making your cocktail hour appetizer spread come to life. And if we have fun doing it, we can do it for desserts too. 
So look forward to that show coming later this summer where we will go into deep dive detail on creating your own appetizer spread. If your caterer is going to be charging you $5 to $10 per person on the cocktail hour, then this is a great point to consider. Of course, you're going to spend some money buying the ingredients on your own. And of course, you're going to spend some time in getting everything organized and set up. But if you're looking to keep that bottom line as low as possible, then this is a great option for you. More and more couples are choosing to have a loved one officiate their wedding ceremony. However, chances are your pool of friends and family members are first timers, AKA they have no clue what they're doing. Don't risk an underprepared, awkward wedding ceremony by your rookie loved one officiant. Solve weeks of panic and guesswork leading up to the wedding day with the Unboring Officiant Training Package created by a full-time professional wedding officiant. With the Unboring Officiant online course, Mark Allen Grulow guides your loved one through personal coaching and an easy step-by-step process to crafting your personal love story-based wedding ceremony and delivering it on the wedding day just like a pro. Unboring Officiant is filled with all the tools and templates your loved one will ever need. It's helped hundreds of new officiants all over the world, and it's completely risk-free with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Give your loved one everything they need to create your unforgettable wedding ceremony by visiting unboringofficient.com slash wedding planning podcast. That website again is unboringofficient.com slash wedding planning podcast. And next up, this is wedding money saver number nine, skip the champagne for the toast. You have already spent a ton ton of money on that bar and adding another few hundred dollars for champagne just is not necessary. Unless you are a champagne lover and you cannot see your reception without it, your guests can toast with whatever drink they have in their hand. You're looking at about 20 bottles of champagne for 150 wedding guests. And depending on how fancy you get with that champagne, this is an extra 200 to 400 to on up from there expense that just is not necessary. And here we are, I saved one of my all-time favorite wedding money-saving opportunities for last, and that is to buy and or sell your wedding decorations to another couple after the wedding on a wedding retail site like eBay, Craigslist, or Facebook group. Bless the internet for making it so easy to connect with other couples who are looking for affordable wedding decorations to buy for their own day. Depending on your area, you should find a ton of local groups on Facebook. So open Facebook and in the search box, try a search for wedding resale and your city name to get started. Craigslist is also another great option. There are also dozens of wedding resale sites out there. These two options, Facebook and Craigslist, are my favorite. And let me tell you why. It's pretty important that you are buying and or selling from a local couple. And that's just because shipping is really expensive. So if we're talking about shipping 20 glass vases, it's going to cost more to ship those than they're worth in the first place. So your best bet is to make a local arrangement with someone who you can simply drive and pick up or drop off items to and skip the shipping altogether. Again, it's just going to completely eat up any savings that you're likely to see. For a really easy example of this, let's say you do your own flowers and you go out to your local flower warehouse and you find some beautiful containers and vases. You pay five bucks each for 40 of them. So you've made a $200 investment in those flower vases and those containers that you're going to use for your centerpieces. 
after the wedding is over, those vases and centerpiece containers are still going to be like brand new. These aren't things that wear out or get scuffed or chipped. They might a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit, but not to the point where anyone would ever notice it. So after your wedding, if you resold those vases to another couple, and even if you price them at half of what you paid, you would still be getting back half of your money. It's like a 50% discount on anything that you buy for purpose of decorating the ceremony or the reception. And the same concept works with pretty much any decoration item you could think of. So table linens, LED candles and tea lights, containers and vases, table numbers, charger plates and dishes, basically anything that hasn't been monogrammed or personalized and could be used by another couple. And on this topic of community sharing and buying and selling, I'll throw in here as well another great Facebook group to join if you're early into planning and you're out exploring your options for decorations and such. A great group is called Buy Nothing, and that's B-U-Y Nothing. There are local groups of Buy Nothing all over the place, and it's essentially a humongous neighborhood trading network where you don't pay money for anything. You're just trading things that you don't need anymore with other local neighbors, and it's a wonderful resource. It's totally worth checking out. And I'll say here, I am a big fan of recycling in general and reusing, repurposing, and recycling existing materials and goods and wedding decorations This is plain good common sense and it's a way to take care of our beautiful environment and of course our beautiful planet. And with that, we have rounded out our wedding money saving series. I hope you found a few ideas to implement into your own wedding plans. And I can't wait to hear from you about the stories of what you plan to cut back on or cut out entirely alternatives that you've found, any money wedding saving stories that you would like to share, you can shoot me a DM on Instagram at Wedding Planning Podcast. And you can also find me via email, weddingplanningpodcast.co slash contact. Thank you again for being here. Thank you for letting me be a part of your wedding plans. It means the world to me. And I can't wait to talk again next week. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Wedding Planning Podcast. For a list of any links and resources called out in today's show, take a peek at the show notes in your podcast player whenever you have a hands-free moment. You can also subscribe to receive convenient show recaps via email by visiting weddingplanningpodcast.co. While you're there, you can browse a library of all past episodes and view special offers from our sponsors. That website again is weddingplanningpodcast.co. Thank you so much for including me and the Wedding Planning Podcast in your wedding plans. And I'll talk to you again next week, same time, same place.